Hey guys, I got Doc Mitchell waiting on us. I wanted to do um, a quick updated version of a quote-unquote perfect character guide. Um, I'm keeping in mind that the way I'm going to play is with light or no armor, such as maybe a Merc outfit, maybe some Raider armor, which has like a four damage threshold because I think the Pain Spike armor looks really cool. But I might run around in Prostitute's gear or something. And, and this allows for survivability under all of those conditions and, and to put out a lot of damage. Um, the, if you're going to be using uh, small guns and energy weapons and things like that, um, the obvious thing you'd want is agility. Uh, that's, that's your, I guess, DPS stat as far as that goes. Um, I also like dropping a point into perception. Um, I don't know if it's a hidden mechanic in the game, but I seem to be more accurate like that. And I don't think it's just in the back of my head. Um, my guns seem to work better uh, with a higher perception. I don't know why. Some people will pull all their points from perception. And if you've got Edie with you, as far as your, your awareness of enemies goes, it really wouldn't make much of a difference. But I've noticed it just seems that the guns operate better with a higher perception. And whether that's my imagination or not, I don't know. I can't prove it, but uh, I think it's a hidden mechanic within the game. Anyway, this is how I set my character up. Okay. Also, this allows for every single playstyle, no matter what you're doing. Um, if you're going with big guns, if you're going with energy weapons, if you're going melee, if you're going small guns, which is my favorite because it's the hardest, melee is way overpowered. Big guns and explosive, obviously, you know, they, they carry their own weight. They just, just, uh, AOE, area of effect damage, you know, just cover a, a large area. So we know what the advantages of those are. Small guns, um, require some skill and accuracy, I think, you know, more so than some of the other play styles. But whatever you're going to do, this would cover all of those. And the first one is strength. I leave that alone. And if you're a melee, you're going, well, why? Well, there's Dr. Usanagi. So factor in that um, with a endurance of seven or higher, you can put an extra point into all of your special stats later. It's 4,000 caps each point, essentially. So it's 28,000 caps, which there's an easy way to get that by the time you get to Vegas. Um, that'll put your strength at six. There, is, there are so many buffs in the world for strength, it's ridiculous. Ant Nectar gives you plus four. Buff Out gives you plus four. Um, all of your whiskey and scotch and things like that give you plus two strength. And so um, it's really, really easy. Oh, uh, Brahmin Steak, Big Horner Steak, those give you plus one. And you can stack those things. So, uh, you know, say uh, a whiskey and a Big Horner Steak and a Brahmin Steak. Well, that would give you a plus four strength. would put you at ten if your strength's at six. For a short period of time and you don't need 10 strength with melee all the time it's, it's situational you run into some death claws you run into a mob of enemies or something sure you want your strength up there so you can just you know go all chuck norris on everybody but the rest of the time when you're facing fiends you're facing one or two enemies here or there or even just a single super mutant you don't need 10 strength you're still gonna two or three hit them if your stats are right and you're and you pick the right perks it doesn't really matter even on very hard so like I say, melee is melee is overpowered. Unarmed is uh, overpowered. So I don't I don't put anything into this. I know I'm going to get an extra point in this later. I will want it at six so I can naturally handle a sniper rifle. Okay. Some people would like an anti-material rifle. Well, if you have the old World Blues uh, DLC, I believe there's a perk in there where you can get add a couple points to your strength. But uh, there's also a perk where you can take two off of your weapon requirements. So six is more than enough for me. All right, so I move past this, and I go to perception. I do drop a point to this. I do. It, it seems to make a difference. There's also some speech checks you get for having a seven perception. So keeping Usanagi in mind, well, there you go. Um, that's that's good for me. Uh, oops, sorry about that. All right, go to endurance. I want my endurance at nine. And since I don't have enough points in here, I'm going to drop this down to three. I, I could take more out. Uh, all this does is gives you, uh, for each point you have in Charisma, it gives you two extra points to um, barter and speech. And if you're anywhere under six or seven, then the speech checks and stuff like that are, are out of your range anyway. If that's important to you, um, go ahead, but you're going to have to sacrifice points somewhere else. I haven't noticed it to make any noticeable difference in gameplay uh, overall. The same way in Fallout 3. In Fallout 3, you just drop it to one automatically because it was, it was totally useless. Charisma had no purpose whatsoever. It's pretty much the same here. It, it doesn't seem to do much, but two points is all I need to pull out of this, so that's fine. So I'll still have, you know, somewhat uh, uh, some points in barter and speech when I actually start my character. Um, doesn't really matter. 
Okay, intelligence. Now, most people would immediately bump this to nine because they know it was nine. No, 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 no. Drop it down to three. You'll still get 100 in all of your skills uh, well before the level cap, okay? And um, with me, I would drop it even lower, honestly, uh, except at four, there's the entomologist perk, and I like that. It allows you to do like 50% extra damage to insects or something like that. Anyway, I love that perk. If it weren't for that, I might even steal another point or two out of here. And then you could essentially put that in, uh, if you didn't care about the entomologist perk, which I can't see not caring about a constant damage buff towards an enemy all the time, but if you didn't, um, you could pull a couple more out of here and put them back in your charisma if you're more worried about having the animal friends perk or there's so few perks that require a high charisma and I don't use any of them. They don't, they don't pertain to combat. And for me, skill points are for the RPG gameplay part of it and perks are for combat. Perks are for um, kicking more ass, getting your ass kicked less and, and doing more damage with your criticals. If your perks aren't doing that for you, don't pick them. I don't pick skill perks uh, as far as skill points. You know, like the small guns or whatever adds extra points to your medicine. Adds it. I don't pick any of those. Those are a complete waste to me. I'm going to have plenty of skill points. By the time I'm level 20-something, I'll be finding stuff just to dump points into, skills that I don't use. Because the ones that I do use um, are pretty much where I need them. Or at least where, where I'm functioning uh, fine with them where they're at. Lockpick is important. I like speech. I, I do start dumping points into speech because there's some speech checks when you pass them that allow you to get extra stuff, um, allow new new options, other dialogue options, may even open up a quest for you. It, it, has, its, it has its uses. I don't ever really worry about barter. Barter would be probably the last skill that I, I dump points into. I don't worry about caps. That's what Caravan and the casinos are for, is caps. Okay, so... Um, the barter is, is one of those last scores. Whatever combat style I'm not using are pretty much the last place I'll put uh, points into unless I need to build another skill up to a certain level um, to get a particular perk. Like some things might need, say, uh, your guns and your energy weapons both to be at 50 or 60 or something. Well, sure, then you need to drop points in energy weapons too by the time you get to that level so you can pick that perk. So um, the very first time you level up... Um, to level two, you, you can scroll down the list and look at all the perks and start picking the ones, plan your character ahead, and know the ones you're going to use, all right? Um, usually you'll level up before you get a chance to rebuild your character. In uh, Fallout 3, it was right as you left the vault. You got to rebuild. Well, here, there's a certain distance you get away from Good Springs and it automatically lets you level again, all right? Uh, or, I mean, uh, rebuild your character again. So... If you put one or two points somewhere where you don't think you should, well, you can you can reallot them right there. Okay, so it's not like this is a last ditch thing, but this is a set build that I know will get you all of your skill points, right? And will make you extremely effective in combat, and will give you high survivability even wearing little or no armor on the hardest difficulty. Now, I wish they would install a legendary difficulty on this, like they did on Skyrim. Tell you the truth, uh, that would be cool, but they don't. So, um, all right, now this. Instead of going to nine, I'm going to go to eight because I'm going to get an extra agility point here in a second. All right, let me go back and put that uh, last one in endurance real quick. All right, because I'm going to want that at ten. All right, I'm going to eventually want that at ten, but I only need it at eight here. All right, and then I'll put one in here. The reason I do this, speaking of skill points, sure, I sacrifice a few skill points by taking some points out of intelligence. All right, but here, as soon as I get that seventh point in luck. I'm going to add plus one to all of my skills. And it's an extra 1% critical hit chance. For those who would raise this up to 10, it's not going to make your gambling that much easier. Um, when I go to Usanagi, this will be at 7. When I find my naughty nightwear, this will be at 8. I can walk into any casino with an 8, eight luck, play blackjack, and strip that casino and get kicked out. It's not a problem. Is, is it, a it will take maybe 5 minutes longer than it would if my luck was on 10. That's about it, the only difference. Okay, and the only other difference is two or three percent points, uh, uh, chance points for a critical hit, which is to me uh, minimal. All right, you can get finesse. That's five percent right there for that for that skill. And uh, if you're running around, especially if you're running around like with small guns, like SMGs and things like that, like I like to do, or a nine millimeter pistol, which fires pretty quick. Um, with each round, you have a critical chance. So whether you have a 17% chance or a 20% chance, to me, is irrelevant, okay? It's still basically one in five. Okay, so at the end of the day, I only got 
uh, 999,000 critical hits instead of a million. Oh, well, boohoo. You know, that's, that's not, that does not justify wasting a point at character creation to me, or two or three points. I would not dump any more into here. Um, and also, every single attack from Sneak, if you like to be stealthy, which I do, I love it. Um, it's where you get amazing damage because there's so many perks to add uh, extra critical bonus damage um, that uh, it's, it's, almost, it's almost crazy not to go sneaky. Um, every single attack from sneak, if you're if you're hidden, if your if your stealth status says hidden, it's automatically critical. I don't care if you have a zero luck, it's still going to be critical. So this is just for say a rapid fire weapon. You're just out there a minigun. Okay, and so you put a couple extra points in there, you get two or three percent extra chance. It's not worth it. All right, anyway, that's that's my reasoning there. Okay, now this will eventually be nine here here in a moment. All right, so let's recap. All right, nothing in the strength, one to perception. Bump your endurance to nine. That's going to allow you to get every single implant, although one of the implants, the regen implant, is useless. It allows you to fully restore your health, I guess, if you wait an hour or something, um, assuming you're not in combat, because you can't wait while you're in combat anyway. But, uh, you know, there are challenges for healing yourself with a certain amount of food and healing yourself with a certain amount of stim packs. I think it's 10,000 damage with each that's worth a lot of XP and stuff. You're not working towards those challenges at all if you've got this um, bunk little implant that does all your healing for you, which is not going to do much healing for you. It doesn't heal any faster than... Um, eating a box of cram on hardcore. It's really, really slow health yet. If you press your back button and wait, apparently it will get your health full. That's a useless thing to me. Um, stim packs are so readily available everywhere, regardless of what difficulty you're playing on. Plus, all the food that's available and everything you drink heals you. It's, it's senseless to me. It's a wasted 8,000 caps, but if you just have caps just to blow, you might as well get it. I mean, it's one of those type of things, and you're allowed to. With uh, 9 Endurance, you can get all 7 special upgrades, and you can get the 2 extra upgrades. The one that really is good is the Subdermal Implant, which adds 4 to your damage threshold. Okay, and that is essentially con just wearing a built-in set of Raider Armor. Fully, fully repaired Raider Armor, which gives you 4 damage threshold. It's just, it's, I can't pass that up. Uh, plus, I get the 2 Toughness perks, which are plus 3 apiece. So that's going to be plus 10 right there. Essentially, I have a almost a reinforced leather set of, of armor on me at all times when I'm butt naked. And, uh, which I like to run around like that, actually, just with clothes and whatever, you know, I think looks cool at the time. It doesn't really have to have any protection value, whatever. Um, a higher damage threshold isn't really effective anyway when someone's hitting you with Ranger Sequoias or uh, missiles in the face and things like this. Okay, so I took 380 damage instead of 420. Well, I'm still dead, you know, so... It, it doesn't make much difference to me. Um, I do like having that built-in damage threshold, and that's enough armor for me in the game. All right, so this this would be my build here. This is where I would start. Now, from here, of course, we go and we get our uh, our traits, and traits lets you buff your character a little more. Um, a lot of them either they'll uh, they'll affect your gameplay a little bit, like of course the you know the wild wasteland just makes things just stupid throws funny stuff in the game. You have stuff like that, but if you're looking to actually um, build your character, like I said, I won't pick any perks that give you skill points, but what I can do is uh, take this trait and it adds five to all of your skills, but drops the amount of XP you earn, which you can either make up for that with a perk later on, right? It gives you 10% less XP. Well, you can add 10% to your XP earned with a perk early on if you want. I wouldn't waste a perk on that, but uh, you can. Me, um, I level too fast anyway. You know, I'm not looking to be level 30 in five minutes. If you want to do that, I don't know, go play Call of Duty. It's type of thing. You know, not to offend anybody, but it's an RPG. It's, it's, it's an experience. You're, you're playing the role of your character. You're developing and building your character and experience the world they gave you to experience here. Okay, rushing through it and finding glitches and cheats and all that. I'm assuming you wouldn't be doing that. You know, if you want a perfect build to play the game within the game, I believe this offers that. Anyway, let me go ahead and answer these. It doesn't matter how I answer them. It's going to give you tag skills. It's kind of like the goat test. Same thing. And it's going to give you tag skills, and then you can reset them anyway. Okay. So what I would normally start with here is repair, speech. And I'm going to, I'm going to be adding five points 
to these shortly. So what I'll do is I'll build this. Um, medicine is good for quite a few things. Um, not just the effectiveness of, effectiveness of your meds, but um, some surgeries that you can do uh, for some of the camp, like Camp Forlorn Hope, for example, um, which are worth a lot of XP when you do them. And there are some speech checks which medicine um, involves and also just your meds. So it's useful all the way around. Uh, I want to have this early, this early, and this early. And there is a speech check in Good Springs that requires a 25 explosives. All right, and barter I will buff with uh, um, whiskey, mentats, and a book, uh, Salesman Weekly, for example, to get it up to where I need to pass the barter speech check with that one merchant in Good Springs. And aside from that, I won't really worry about that. You know, there, there'll be skill books to find for that, and it'll, it'll slowly creep its way up. That'll be one of the last skills that I actually put anything in. But this is, this is where I start. Well, but if you're going to be small guns, what? Okay, guns are effective enough at a low level, regardless of the difficulty. This could be at two or five, and you'd still do about the same early on with it. I'll drop points into guns along with explosives. Um, although I'll be concentrating on small guns, explosives are, are handy to have. And there are certain, uh, certain things you can do with the explosive skill, such as uh, disarming stuff, traps, triggers, and things like that. It's, it's good to have. And you might want to lay some mines, and you might want to pull out your grenade rifle and just go to town every once in a while. Not to mention a mini nuke and things like that, things of that nature. Um, sneak, I'll build up. But with the agility, you'll notice there's a few extra points in some of these skills already. Okay? And what we'll do about agility, did you notice it was only at eight? Now we're going to make it nine. You got a form for you to fill out so I can get a sense of your medical history. Just a formality. Ain't like I expect to find you got a family history of getting shot in the head. All right. If you have the DLCs, you have skilled. Plus five points to every skill, and you suffer a 10% experience penalty um, throughout the game. I like that. You level just a little slower. It kind of kind of stretch it out to where you're not already level 20 something by the time you reach Vegas and things are getting a little boring you know it's it's it adds a little more to it to me I, I, I actually like that I thought I leveled up too fast in Fallout 3 also if you put on very hard in Fallout 3 you earn 50 percent more XP Shoot, you were level 30 before you were even done with the main storyline you know it was, it was ridiculous um, so, but pick this and that's gonna give you a good boost to all your skills if you don't have the DLC I would go with good nature and that will add five points into skills that you don't necessarily want to drop points into early because you're worried about combat. Sure, it's going to take five from your energy weapons and small guns and stuff, but the thing about that is it's taking five from all the different combat skills, but the odds are you're only using one or two of these combat skills. So it's essentially only a 10-point uh, penalty for you, but it's a plus, what, 5, 10, 15, 20, it's a 25-point bonus to all that other stuff, okay? All your uh, friendly skills, barter included. Like I said, I don't really too much care about that, but there you go. But if you do have the DLC, you'll want this, all right? And small frame. Now, this gives you plus one to agility. Now, get this, but your limbs are more easily crippled. Oh, no, I don't want that. That does not mean you take more damage, okay? That does not mean you get hurt more. If someone hits you for 100 points, it's still 100 points, but you have a higher chance on getting your limbs crippled. That is not a bad thing. In New Vegas, when you cripple 50 limbs, you get a free adamantium skeleton perk. I don't know if anyone knew that. Which not only evens this out and makes this as if it didn't exist, but it gives you a free point in agility. Is how that washes out. For all I know, there's more than one rank to that perk. And you can, you can get even more uh, damage resistance to your limbs later. I don't know. But I know that first rank will even this out right here. Okay? And like I say, it's a free, free extra point to agility. So there it's like a free, uh, what would you say, intense training perk? All right, just to start off with. All right, I guess that about does it. There you go. So skilled and small frame. And you saw the, uh, the build on the vigor tester earlier. All right. And then uh, I would suggest right here stealing absolutely everything in his entire house. Okay, including these caps on this shelf. Stealing everything off all the shelves, and then selling them to him right before you leave the door. So you'll have a little bit of a boost in caps when you first leave. Now, if you have the DLC, you're going to have a whole crap ton of weapons, too, and about three or four sets of armor to choose from and some other stuff like that. And, you know, that's, that's 
that's for you to decide how you're going to go. I'll, uh, I'll normally run with, uh, say, Raider armor until I find a Merc outfit, and I'll run with that. But uh, that's that's a build, and um, I can uh, I can attest that it is really effective. Even when you get up into the 20s and 30s, and you know the enemies start pulling out the big guns like the 12.7 millimeter stuff, and the hunting shotguns, and the and the thermic lances and stuff like that. True enough, they'll still do damage to you and whatever, but you'll be um, raping most of your enemies before they get a chance to. Uh, my favorite followers, Veronica and Edie and upgrade them both, and they're beasts. Well, a lot of people like Boone, you know. Boone with his just uh, standard gun that he starts with, his default gun, uh, he's, you know, Mr. Headshot. He steals half your kills, you know. Whatever the case, once you have followers to draw a little bit of the aggro from you so you're not just a damage sponge, because you're not going to be one. Even if you are wearing heavier armors, you know, the, the enemies uh, take two or three times as much damage and deal out two or three times as much damage. So, um... Uh, for me, it's just a matter of, of killing them first before they kill me. Uh, they can't shoot me back when they're dead. That's that's my logic there. And this build should allow you to do that. And this is my two cents. And uh, uh, from experience, I've played these and I know that they work. So uh, try it. Run with it. Um, struggle a little bit because, oh, I don't have 50 points when I level up. Well, it make, makes you think a little bit, right? But uh, drop your points, you know, just scatter them out. Put them in lockpick. Put them in speech. Put some in repair, put some in explosives, put some in small guns, you know, spread them out a little bit. They'll build up in time. You'll find skill books and things like that. It, it'll all even out in the end. And uh, by the time you're done, you'll still have all of your main skills way up there, and you'll still be really powerful. And uh, that 9 Endurance and that 9 Agility, uh, 10 once you reach Usanagi, but even, even them just being at 9 right now is going to give you more survivability, and it's going to allow you to be really effective with your guns, okay? Early on, even with a low gun skill you'll still be doing work. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about all that, oh, I need to put everything in intelligence and sacrifice everything else. Intelligence is not going to stop bullets. Intelligence isn't going to make your bullets act any better. Intelligence is going to maybe let you talk to one or two guys out of shooting you in the face. The rest of them are going to shoot you in the face. So best have your, your um, stuff into uh, uh, combat-related special attributes as opposed to just being smart or just having a smart mouth. One more note is when you level up, I strongly suggest as much of a temptation as it may be to, uh, I need to pick this perk because it gives me five points to my small guns. That is such a waste. Such a waste of a perk. A perk should be something used to constantly buff your character. Black Widow perk. If you're playing, that's why I almost always play a female in Fallout because 90% of the enemies are male. You get the Black Widow perk as a female and you do 10% extra damage to 90% of the human enemies in the game. Okay, whereas if you're playing a guy character, you don't get that advantage. Having the later killer perk opens up two or three speech dialogues in the game, and, and the random raider or fiend here or there that might uh, uh, give you a small damage bonus. But it's not near what it is, is for the girls in this game. So uh, if you do play a female character, uh, you, have the, you have the Black Widow perk. Um, bloody Mass, 5% extra damage to all weapons. That, that gets up there once you're doing a lot of damage with your weapons. If you're doing a base 50, 5% um, is another, probably rounds up to, you know, 3 points of damage. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it really is. It really is. That's, there's 3 extra points to pass through their defenses before your, your base damage of your gun kicks in. Okay, think about it that way. So, for example, if they had a damage threshold of 4, alright, well, if you've got 3 extra damage, now their damage threshold is only 1. So you're, the rest of your gun damage is going through. Just look at it that way, and, and it works. Um, all the extra critical damage you can do, whether you're doing melee or guns or whatever. Better Criticals is the best perk that ever existed. It's the most overpowered one. Other than Cyborg and Fallout 3, that might have been... If, even if you didn't use energy weapons, that one was just ridiculous. But um, the Better Criticals is just way overpowered. Totally ridiculous. Um, you stack that with uh, the Professional, where you do... Um, uh, so much extra damage from sneak attacks with, say, you know, uh, pistols and SMGs. Um, well, with the DLC here, they have Sleepy Time, which is an SMG that's, uh, it already rapes by itself, and you add better criticals and the professional on top of that, and um, in one burst, I'm not saying you're going to take out the Mother Deathclaw, but pretty close. You get all those criticals lined up back to back, and you're, go you're going to knock dust. You're going to think, wow, I didn't know I had an anti-material rifle in my hand. You don't. You got Sleepy Time, but it's, you know, it's raping face. So uh, stack, stack, your, uh, stack your perks, 
to where they buff your character, you should either do more damage, take less damage, or boost your criticals with your perks. Everything else that's, oh, it makes the random mole rat be nice to me, that's, that's, no, no, uh-uh, that's not gonna cut it on very hard. That's, that's totally irrelevant. Well, a mole rat might come fight at my side. Yeah, it'll die because it, it just looks at one of the enemies you're fighting. It's not, you know, it's not even gonna draw attention, except for one, maybe one bullet, then they'll go back to shooting you in your face. Now, pick perks that uh, boost your damage, make you take less damage, and boost your criticals. And I promise you'll be running around as a beast, and you'll be saying, sometimes you will tell yourself, wow, where did I get this heavy armor, and where did I get... Uh, in fact, who switched this to very easy? And nobody did. It's, you're still on very hard, but you're running around raping face. And uh, that's my, like I said, that's my two cents. And run with that, and uh, uh, give me a comment. Tell me what you think. And you know what? This helped you at all. Like it. Liking is good. Liking is great. Liking is grand. And I will catch you all later.